The view that evil is an absence of good is known as the doctrine of privatio boni, meaning the privation of goodness in Latin. It was first derived by the Neoplatonist philosopher Plotinus, but was later brought into Christian thought in the works of St. Augustine. In my video, Why There is Evil, I even argued that one could derive specific theological doctrines such as the Fall, and its relationship to the knowledge of good and evil, from privatio boni and idealism. However, privatio boni is not always intuitive. For example, though one could argue that they are distortions in good things, war, disease, and cancer all seem to be actual existence. However, there may be a way to derive privatio boni in a robust way from first principles from an idealist paradigm. To set up the foundation for this, let me quickly rederive idealism from the introspective argument. As I have pointed out in previous videos, the hard problem of consciousness entails that the mind is a non-emergent, immaterial substance, and the interaction problem rules out substance dualism. As such, monistic idealism entails, a result which nicely fits with the discoveries in modern physics demonstrating quantum non-realism, and the fact that physical space-time is an emergent illusion. Moving on from this point, we find that our minds have senses of value that allow us to label things as good or bad. However, whose sense of value is right? After all, relativists will point out that we have differing opinions on what is good, and if morality is subjective, then how is any one person's value set more universal than any other person's value set? The flaw here is the inability to recognize a larger mind. Once one understands idealism, one recognizes that our minds, and thus our concepts of value, are contained within a larger mind. Since our minds are the product of that larger mind, and our minds contain value, it follows that our senses of value derive from God as well, and thus it follows that God also has a sense of value. But some might say that God's sense of value is subjective like everyone else's. In truth, it is subjective, but it is not like everyone else's. Given that in idealism God's mind contains all of existence, no sense of value can exist that is not derived from God's sense of value. This fact allows us to draw a curious conclusion about God's sense of value. Though this sense of value is metaphysically subjective, it must also be universally intersubjective. Since all senses of good derive from God's sense of good, it follows that God's sense of good is universal, and what is universally intersubjective is epistemically objective. Thus God is objectively good out of logical necessity. However, acts of creation are the products of intentionality, and one's intentionalities are motivated by one's values. Thus it follows that creation is good as well. But then if God sees that all is objectively good, whence cometh evil? The only remaining solution is that evil is the privation of good, hence the doctrine of privatio boni. But what do we make of value sets that conflict with God's value set? How would it be possible for such a value set to exist? Wouldn't such a system of values conflict with its own existence? To explain this, we would need to identify how such value sets come into existence. If we start at the beginning, we have only one mind with one value set, namely God's. Since this value set is the only one in existence, it is defined as universally good. This good value set then causes a good intentionality, which then causes a good creation. And since this creation is good, according to Privatio Boni, there can be nothing missing in it. But then how is privation produced? On the grand scale, it would be impossible since by definition nothing in the all can ever be missing from the all. Therefore evil could only ever exist at a limited scale. Namely, an individual creation would be deprived of some other individual creation needed to make it good. But since this other thing would still exist as part of the all, this privation would necessarily have to exist in the form of a separation or break in the intended design a privation and ordering rather than a privation of substance. Privation would then more precisely be defined as a distortion or disordering in the good. Thus, given that a value set in contradiction with God's value set would necessarily need to be an example of such deprivation or disordering, the mind that produced it would likewise need to be disordered. But given that the missing elements needed to make this mind ordered also exist, it would follow that this mind is in a state of disconnection from the rest of God's mind that contains those elements. Thus the explanation for value sets other than God's value set is not that God's value set is relative to, but rather that the subsidiary minds are in a state of ego or separation from God. This concept of ego or ego consciousness as privatio boni when applied to other minds will be relevant in future videos. If you like this video, subscribe, and don't forget to check out my novel, Alaris, The Lances of Light, on Amazon Kindle in the description below. Now you can find us on Facebook at Idealism and Science vs. Atheism. This mind is the matrix of all matter.